Hello everyone and now welcome to a game TGW versus Cement. This game taking place here on Northern Isles. On the top right hand side of the map we have TGW spawning as the pink night elf player. Meanwhile on the bottom left TG, uh, uh, Cement spawning as the red undead. Alright for the first time in a long time the, the positioning on the overlay actually matches where they are left and right. Hopefully that makes things a bit easier for me as we're looking at an ancient of war now being built in between these two creep camps here. This green creep camp which seems a little bit too far off away and well no reason to really try and clear out the, the Tuscar Trapper creep camp without an ancient of war. So I'm interested to see what this particular creep pattern is. Now it is going to come down to the heroes of choice as the altar of elders and altar of darkness are coming into play. I'm going to go ahead and speed things up to four times speed just so we can get straight into the action. And it is a dread lord first by cement. Meanwhile, demon hunter first coming in from TGW. Um, well, no, no reason to say or not say. Um, well, dread lord first is rather interesting always one of those crazy crazy strategies as we're now looking at the ancient of war actually moving across here going to be absorbing a bit of damage and now the archer also taking a little bit of damage here as we're going to go after perhaps immolation yeah trying to immolate all of these units at the same time yeah immolation or a, a, or immolation against all three of these units here trying to maximize that damage and once again that stronger immolation really coming um, into play here finishing off this creep camp much more quickly as the ogre magi well tries to take down the ancient of war and will not be able to do so Meanwhile, the Dreadlord has gone off to the side here, has slept the Ogre Magi before the Ogre Magi could cast too much Bloodlust. Tuskar Warrior um, ends up using Bloodlust there and then, well, gets pretty much taken down immediately as additional, uh, well, additional Skeletal Warriors joining in on the fight here. Are we going to perhaps see a detonation? Those Wisps are, or the Wisp is trying to get onto those Skeletal Minions, does get one of the Skeletal Minions and the detonation Player off four. on Very that bad. Dreadlord. Dreadlord, interestingly enough, opting to go for a vampiric, vampiric aura and has two sacrificial skulls without a scroll of town portal and unsummoning that altar of darkness for that extra bit of gold. We should be looking at extra um, acolytes being trained up here in just a moment. A rod of necromancy, there should be three, yeah, three skeletal minions out on the battlefield with perhaps another one ready here in just a moment as we're going to go ahead and swarm out this ogre magi creep camp all right that scouting wisp earlier on and did perhaps see that there was no scroll of town portal and the dual sacrificial skulls there knowing that his opponent is going to be trying to expand this is one of those situations where and um, well i guess warcraft 3 is starting to look a bit more like StarCraft 2 where um, having your opponent's strategy um, can kind of dictate what you want for your strategy as well. All right, this is always interesting watching the Demon Hunter going after just so many units nearly surrounded, no detonation there, and damage is just racking up so quickly against all of these ghouls. There is a sleep right there, so sleeping, the archers could try and shadow meld, but the dust of appearance on the Dreadlord is there as we see the Demon Hunter has opted to go for mana burn as that second ability all right there goes another ghoul there and now the demon hunter well in a little bit of a precarious situation trying to go after a ghoul there goes one more ghoul and able to break free again i've we've, i've said this in the past the demon hunter um, without evasion is, mu is a much more squishy hero than originally thought. Meanwhile, the demon hunter going to try and go after these um, ghouls here. And interestingly enough, the ancient protectors, because they are in fact, um, in fact, buildings that um, have life um, and are alive, they are actually going to be able to have a vampiric aura used against them. Archer going up against a ghoul and wins out in that duel. Meanwhile, that ancient protector now trying to fight back here and beautifully done by the nerubian tower applying that cold both to the archer and this demon hunter to try and maximize their slowness damage here as we're looking at the haunted gold mine down to 141 hit points is it going to be enough to take it down getting very very close there however is a scroll of town portal he was down to 21 hit points and being forced to retreat back no no face cam all right let me give me a second Where'd it go? All right. 
sorry about that. Anyways, getting back into the swing of things here, yeah. Even had my light on and everything, and was talking to the camera earlier. The gold mine has face cam. <laughs> well, that that haunted gold mine nearly got taken down, down to 143 hit points. Interestingly enough, the acolytes are not repairing it uh, so far, but we do see entangling of the gold mine off to the north. This entangled gold mine should be completed in just a moment. Meanwhile, Demon Hunter has used Immolation Aura and has gone back over the top, now strong enough um, to get back into the action. But you, as you can see, these moon wells are pretty much already bone dry as additional moon wells may need to be added, perhaps getting into a five or, or getting an additional two or three moon wells, even if you don't plan to go into low upkeep. The Demon Hunter will be draining mana um, and, and out of those units fairly quickly. Is there a staff of preservation? No, there is not. But that Goblin Shredder really joining in on that fight rather fast and, they, and be able to take things down. You can see this Tuskar Sorcerer, even with that additional um, plus five armor, taking a lot of damage from that Shredder and also these, um, also these Huntresses. Demon Hunter picking up a Ring of Protection plus four. Normally not a useful item, but with the Demon Hunter um, well, trying to tank so much damage with Immolation, it actually may work out well. That additional, what is that? Additional 24 effect, 24% effective hit points. Acolyte now repairing this haunted gold mine here. Two Nerubian towers and a Necropolis will make it difficult to well swarm into this posi position. Hello, friends. Um, as we are uh, getting into the action. I don't know, when I say hello friends, um, it makes me feel like I am an elementary school teacher since that, that's what teachers uh, now often call their, call their students. Hello friends, please sit down, right? It's not, it's not even like hello class or hello students, it's hello friends. Um, or at least that's what happens at my children's local elementary school. I don't know. Coming back around, and Demon Hunter sitting at level 4, level 2 mana burn, level 2 immolation. Demon Hunter going to go ahead and try and jump on in here. And yes, using that immolation against three ta uh, three targets at once. Staff of Teleportation going to teleport back off to the north here as the Goblin Zeppelin. Well, trying to finish off this Tree of Life, not going to really work out well at all as the Ancient of War was dishing out a bit of damage too. Meanwhile, Panda is going to get up to level 2 off of this creep camp, but has suffered significantly more damage than he originally expected because, well, the Demon Hunter wasn't nearby. Uh, Brewmaster down to 79 hit points, going to try and finish things off a lot of that drunken haze there. Are we going to try, even try to go after the remainder of those units? No, we are not. They're just going to go ahead and retreat back. Print teachers need to show authority. Proto stream. Yeah, yeah. I, I I really think like teachers should really say hello class. Like, like you, yeah. I don't know. Students don't respect teachers nearly that often or that much. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm old fashioned that way. Then again, teachers can do things to lose uh, lose their um, lose that authority. Any coming ways coming back around. Blight is applied onto the ground here, though even it is on a lake, so you can't really quite see it. Dreadlord now making its rounds back off to the north. Old we old school, bro. <laughs> yeah, old we are old school. Coming back through, Ancient of War going to try and absorb or tank some of that damage here. Demon Hunter could come around here, try use Immolation against all three of those targets. Meanwhile, the Null Assassin is well going to hold on to that aggro, um, on to that Ancient of War, as that target will never ever get poisoned. Coming back around the other way, Dreadlord trying to go after a relatively difficult creep camp. And I don't know, this Cement may actually be biting off more than he can chew right here off of a single hero as we do see a reveal coming across there dreadlord getting revealed off of perhaps a crystal ball or what exactly is doing the revealing i'm not quite sure as the units are now looking to retreat back oh reveal coming in from the dreadlord himself as we see a potion of lesser invulnerability mana burn onto the dreadlord as gargoyles have taken up to the skies panda is already at level two very close to level three and should be able to um, and should be able to blow those units out of the sky there. There's another Breath of Fire. Are we going to see enough damage onto that Gargoyle? No, we are not. Drunken Haze, Breath of Fire, and a little bit of slow poison damage. Still not enough. Cement now going into Tier 2, um, or um, well, low upkeep, not Tier 2. Already at Tier 2 with those Gargoyles. But strong move by TGW in order to get that Panda with that Breath of Fire to try and blow them out of the air. 
good thing we always go through we're not code is casting this game on reforged <laughs> yeah coming back through demon hunter with two staff of teleportations uh, definitely one will be transferred over to that panda here in just a second the gargoyles are really looking to find a way to do a bit of harassment um, hasn't really found an easy target as of yet. We're looking at 50 over 50 supply compared to 63 over 80. So the undead army is significantly larger, but it is this go-wide strategy between ghouls and gargoyles, something that the panda should be able to shut down very easily. However, interestingly enough, this flock of gargoyles is keeping the brewmaster at bay and an gonna allow them to creep out this creep camp however a couple of ghouls are now here and here we are demon hunter gonna try and engage against all these units obsidian statue out on the battlefield a death knight out here on the battlefield as well could be getting in a couple of heals as the huntress is gonna try and swarm a bit around as well immolation now picked up by the dreadlord dreadlord able to deal 10 damage a second as we're gonna look at the ogre magi getting taken down panda drunken haze breath the fire has a tome of intelligence right there but doesn't pick it up as well it probably wishes it picked it up and was able to get in a little bit more mana regeneration and more mana damage there's a mana burn onto a death knight here as the panda waiting for a little bit of additional mana for another drunken haze breath of fire combination all right that potion of mana was in fact used i don't know if it was necessary oh gonna be opening up an item slot for an orb of venom so the Brewmaster and Demon Hunter can both now attack those gargoyles. That damage over time additionally going to be incredibly important as we are going into a possible engagement here. Uh, 1.35 actually having an impact on things. Yeah, 1.35 having a big impact now. Dr Dreadlord now trying to retreat back. Where are we going? Dual Ancients of Lord Dryads now coming back again and where are these units all tr trying to retreat back to? Still not quite sure. We are going in the stone form for those gargoyles. Regeneration is going to be a very big thing as both sides are now sitting in low upkeep. No, uh, It looks as though Cement is going to try and take down the bottom right hand cre um, creeps. Perhaps get to level 2 on that death knight. That level 2 unholy aura is going to be or level 1 unholy aura at level 2 will help with the movement of all of these gargoyles all right making its way off to the bottom right hand side here this one position creeping is going to be key placing down a sentry ward off to the north are we going to look at a potential creep jack and there you are druids of the talon um well i'm now out here on the battlefield if we do go into um the druids of the talon that crow form remember now they do have piercing damage Units still trying to engage here. Where are they going to perhaps be traveling traveling off to next? Sentry wards placed down in position. Yeah, this first sentry ward really should have been placed off over here a little bit more. Then the trap could have been sprung a bit better. I'm trying to dive on in right as the creeps were engaged. I don't know if Cement is going to ever watch me uh, watch this particular cast, but I don't know. He can tell me if I'm right or wrong in the comments. All right, Drunken Haze. Now across all of those, well, what is that? Oh, prioritize. So prioritize uh, to engage fly and um, um, to hit a new target. All right. So sorry that that prioritize flying units first unless ordered otherwise. All right. So yeah, never really. I don't know if you guys noticed that little icon on gargoyles, but yep, that is now there. I know it was a spill and. Sp skill and an ability as we're now looking at the demon hunter coming in from the back now level five now on that dreadlord dreadlord with level five are we going to perhaps see level three vampiric aura and this is interesting vampiric aura going up against druids of the talent who are now applying fairy fire there is some damage to, uh, what the death coil and frost nova as we see some damage coming back through staff of preservation on that demon hunter as both sides are still fighting again and again staff of teleportation inbound again gargoyles are now getting a shut down here as the demon hunter with that orb of venom able to deal quite a bit of damage against all those air units scroll of healing continuing to blast away as another gargoyle gets shot down 77 supply compared to 61 though as cement still having plenty of units to try and engage against all of those units here all right gargoyle is still trying to fight and engage meanwhile staff of teleportation well um trying to uh, break free there but somehow the brewmaster now being forced to simply walk all the way back 
are we going to be looking at this army regrouping here? TGW in a bit of trouble trying to head back off to the north. There's a staff of preservation from the Demon Hunter as the Demon Hunter now going to be in a little bit of trouble himself. All right, Druid of the Talent is going to try and retreat back here, not making it to the Moonwell in time. I thought he was close enough, but didn't drink from the Moonwell and ends up getting finished off. Hi, Dustwallow Dweller. I'm doing well. Thanks for checking in. Brewmaster now looking ready to engage here. Dreadlord low on mana, and both sides are going to be fighting their way through. We also have a Destroyer who's going to be trying to devour all of that Fairy Fire as level 2 mana burn, making its and taking its toll on the enemy heroes that Death Knight, Dreadlord, and Lich currently all fairly low on mana. Lich with that Orb of Corruption still, well, nasty to deal with. Even if it doesn't have that Frost Nova 2 1 upgrades going up against one, or I guess 2 0 upgrades and 1 0 upgrades going up against 1 2 upgrades, as we see the Goblin Alchemist as the third and final hero coming in from the Night Elf. All right, a little bit of damage. Obsidian Statue down to six hit points now. Unholy Aura still providing a little bit of healing as we're going to get engaged there. All right, well, my light turned off. Forgot to charge it, apparently. Both sides still trying to fight through. Dryad's going to try and poke down some of those gargoyles. Gargoyle is now back in the stone form, trying to shake off some of that uh, breath of fire and trying to regenerate a bit of hit points there. Scroll of Protection now also into play. The Dryad's now playing a dance, trying to abolish magic. The Scroll of Protection, instead of actually dealing damage against those gargoyles there, buying a bit of free attacks on those gargoyles. That's one of those strategies that you can try and use if you think your opponent does have an auto casting on and meanwhile demon hunter back off to the north gonna try and retreat back here dryads and, and druids of the talon breath of fire across some of those ghouls and the obsidian statue getting caught in the back as well all right great exchanges going back and forth F frost nova slowing things down i believe moon wells are going to be able to heal back up here as the druid of the claw just wants to go back into its druid form and heal up dryads could be in a little bit of trouble here as they're going to get caught in transit in between these two bases the gargoyles still able to deal quite a bit of damage drunken haze breath of fire as well scroll of healing and stone form all in quick succession there trying to well maximize the effectiveness and deal damage to those units from both sides all right lich looking to retreat back here goblin alchemist does have acid bomb can apply some additional damage and that is a lot of negative armor between acid bomb acid bomb and fairy fire and one auto attack could end up dealing so much bonus damage overall as the demon hunter is still trying to catch up here are we perhaps going to be looking at more mana burn going to go ahead and try to get an engagement breath of fire across all of those units again dryad's now trying to retreat back no more auto casting on that abolished magic as Druids of the claw are now back out here onto the battlefield staff for preservation saving that Druid to the claw there as both sides fighting their way through and do we see enough well splash damage there the panda really maximizing that damage one more breath of fire could deal quite a bit of damage but there is no mana on that brewmaster as that brewmaster is still fighting its way through low hit point through the claw trying to retreat back gargoyle is still racking up quite a bit of damage here as we're looking at the demon hunter getting in mana burns and looking to finish off gargoyle after gargoyle tgw making a strong strong play and comeback and one of the reasons why this gargoyle strategy works is that well they're only two supplies so they are still a relatively cheap flying unit that they're able to swarm and as they swarm, even if you take them down, they do not give that much experience as they're only two supply. Um, I, I think a lot of Borg players are trying to use Wind Riders in the same breath and same way, except Wind Riders are four supply units and end up feeding experience. Um, but we'll see if, well, Orc is given uh, a proper adjustment to their air. Anyways, coming back around, let's focus on this Night Elf versus Undead matchup, Crota as Druids of the Claw while looking to march back and forth. 72 supply compared to 68. Both sides while trying to figure out their next play, their next move. Vampiric Aura is at level 3, so that is going to be of, of a great help for all of those gargoyles if there are any Hippogriffs or Druids of the Talon. Thank you for the follow. Meanwhile, Druids of the Claw, Dryads looking to launch another attack there. Anti-Magic Potion trying to clear out the top left-hand side. Undeed, undead needs Worms and maybe um, Worms just to be able to start slowing things down and starting to well, divide and conquer those enemy units. Um, meanwhile, Lich is nearby, going to gain a little bit of experience. Death Knight, Dreadlord, Lich gets up to level 3. That is going to be a big deal. Odd 
the number the level is always incredibly important as we now see level two frost nova a 74 supply compared to 75 um goblin shredder off over here no additional units being trained by tgw we can see that there were in uh, one ancient of wind but besides one or two druids the talent i haven't seen that many any longer perhaps not altogether that useful as fairy fire was just often getting devoured by the by that lone destroyer three zero upgrades now completed for the gargoyles and those destroyers there as the units are now trying to retreat back buying a little bit of tam time there's a sleep demon hunter going to try and mana burn and does get a good mana burn off on that obsidian statue as tgw looks to set up well an ancient protector and perhaps start expanding to the bottom right hand side of the map we can see that nature's blessing is also completed so this tree of eternity could get up and walk somewhere else dryads have one three upgrades so are able to take a little bit more damage and we're looking at this army of druids of the claws and dryads here this doesn't really look like a 68 supply army so it was that 20 35 35 plus 35 plus 16 or 14 yeah not quite sure where the rest of the units are on the battlefield oh goblin shredder call also counts as four all right so there we are more dryads coming back across here as two ancient protectors now nearly completed for night elf all right what is cement doing back in his own base we are going into frost worms as mentioned earlier um, or suggested by the chat earlier frost worms will be able to divide and conquer but has also pushed cement into high upkeep so as he's in high upkeep he's actually falling behind in gold 14 gold a second compared to eight so losing a six gold a second over his opponent and um, uh, as soon as he starts an engagement though he should be able to come out on top but he needs to start an engagement with that larger army for it to really make a significant difference three one upgrades here Four frost worms are in the back they're very very powerful damage perhaps going to try and blast down those druids of the claw since they cannot take down any of those dryads and we could be going in an engagement here all right gargoyle is going after some of those moon wells are we perhaps going to see some units lost in transit and here we are staff of preservation and wow a staff of teleportation inbound scroll of town portal trying to come back the other way frost going to try and engage are they going to actually splash to, on top of themselves that's exactly what the frost worms want to be able to hit all of these druids of the cloud there's a carry on form but that was actually a little bit late there as both sides are fighting their way through all right frost going to try and take down some of those druids of the cloth anti-magic potion on the brewmaster brewmaster going up against all of these gargoyles who are really coupled together as that carry on swarm starting to rip through some of those units as well so up oh, breath of fire coming to an end we're looking at the alchemist coming back in on the fight here there is some and well an acid bomb coming across as we see a sleep on to a onto a alchemist as well more well preservation moving back and forth the main gold mines are now all done and including the expansions as well so no one mining any gold at this point trying to push back the other side demon hunter falls at level at level five but is going to get resurrected with an awful reincarnation and back in on the battlefield meanwhile dreadlord does get up to level six and um and well it does get up to level six getting that infernal ability coming back around though we are looking at the chemical raging alchemist trying to finish off all the air units 56 supply compared to 50 as the demon hunter now looking to retreat back one frost worm right there perhaps going to turn back around staff of preservation saves as the dryads are continuing to poke alchemist was able to absorb a little bit more damage from that frost worm with that anti-magic shell as the panda now comes back over here with full hit points and mana drunken haze breath of fire going to blow over a couple of gargoyles as well and tgw may be able to survive this as cement falling in the supply lead both sides fighting their way through we are looking at the dreadlord and the lich trying to retreat back and with the death knight unable to give any additional mana here we are here we go the chemical raging alchemist trying to catch up perhaps slicing and dicing his way through any of these units here death knight unable to get a death coil off perhaps going to try and transfer something over a little bit later as the panda getting some rejuvenations as well bottom right hand side of the map everything that you need to set up an expansion except the main base itself as the tree of eternity is getting up and making a way back down ancient of wind already in position to scout out the last at last gold mine as well as the death knight well dreadlord and lich retreating back 
perhaps going to try and unsummon up a couple of buildings for one last ditch push. Yep, unsummoning um, some of these buildings here. He's going to unsummon a slaughterhouse as well. I would have thought an obsidian statue would have been exactly what he needed. Instead, he's going to be trying to buy a couple of um, a couple of items instead for this last push here. All right. 48 supply compared to 40 army sizes relatively um, similar 35 supply compared to 42 but that is with a well was with a goblin shredder not quite sure where that goblin shredder is right now um ancient protector ancient of war walking over perhaps to the top left hand side of the map both of these locations could get cleaned up here in just a moment tree of life wants to root itself not take too much damage and you can see one round of magic attack really causing problems here as this building the tree of life is going to get taken down meanwhile top right hand side of the map brewmaster looking to get to level five perhaps for that level three breath of fire as this tree of life really never stood a chance bottom right hand side we are looking to entangle a gold mine and perhaps get a little bit of gold per second by tgw as this ancient of wind is also going to get taken down we can see that the frost worm is able to freeze that building so these ancient protectors are both not going to be activated at the same time as the ancient protector and now make its way and shift back over all right stronger healing coming in from the night elf army with the help of those moon wells and these druids of the claw no obsidian statue so that was my big surprise there cement not training up a one last obsidian statue before moving on out could have tr and unsummoned a couple of these ziggurats instead um, as he's not well and now trying to go for a last boneyard all right plays are going to be incredibly important where are these units perhaps traveling off to next a new infernal will be dropping out of the sky here in just a moment as cement knows he needs to shut down this expansion before it gives tgw too large of an economic lead all right are we going to try and engage here a second frost worm ready to join in on the fight perhaps both of these buildings ancient protectors will not be able to fire at all pretty much removing any of that home field static defense instead of engaging against this entangled gold mine though going after the main buildings and perhaps all of the production here as well there in comes the demon hunter demon hunter pretty much gets slept the instant he lands gonna take some damage there is well an infernal gonna stun him down as well so sleep potion of invulnerability now being used mana burn onto the uh, dreadlord dreadlord completely out of mana now as the frost worms are showing up to the fight trying to finish things off there goblin shredders and and bear completely taken down in a moment there as the dreadlord down to 362 hit points staff of preservation for the save there as the tree of eternity is down at the south position both sides still fighting their way through and um, well infernal getting that immolation damage across more units so just pretty much saying you know i too have immolation and can rack up damage lich could be in trouble lich gets taken down sleep onto a unit there both sides still fighting their way through as the lich falls at level three no more and well focus fire as we're looking at more breath of fire dryad now going after all of these frost from frost from damage um um, you know, Dryad's going after Destroyer and Frostworms and able to clean them up without Crypt Fiends. Those Dryads were able to stick around far too long and Cement loses the game. Last his opponent as he still had an expansion down here to the south. Great, great game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's take a look at the final scores. Um, final scores being, well, you guys can look at the numbers yourself. Um, Cement actually having a higher overall hero score, but TGW able to outlast his, his opponent overall. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.